Okay, let's change the, uh, show you this is how I change the um, valve clearance on a Toyota. I hope the chain sprocket is not going to fall down before I got it all back together. Here we have the old ones. They were mostly... Uh, what is it? Can you see it here? Fifty-two, that is. So they were fifty, fifty-two, and we had to change them to this. That's what I ordered, and I couldn't get them in New Zealand. I had to order them from Australia. Got them all here. So we go twenty-two. There we go. So twenty-two. Here, yeah. one, then twenty four, goes second, come on, don't fuck me up now. Then this one, it's going to be 26, so the third, 26, come on, yep, then 32, Two, then thirty four, goes here, twenty four, yep, thirty four. And twenty eight goes here. Now I have to juggle this with both hands without, I don't want to have the chain fall down. I have to take the whole engine apart if the chain drops down. So I have to put the camera down, and then I'm just going to have to reinstall the camshaft. Put that little knob into the sprocket without anything falling apart. Then put the bolt on, and then reinsert all the uh, all the stuff. And then turn the engine over and hope I my calculations were right for the valve clearance, because there was only point one. The clearance was almost gone on the exhaust. This one was reasonably good, only one tenth of a millimeter, basically negligible. Plus, I could never take that out. That camshaft out here, you can't take the intake out without having the chain fall apart. So you'd have to dismantle the whole engine side here, which the previous guy already did by um, fixing the head and fixing a burnt up valve. And he told me he grinded the valves to get the clearance right. I've done about 20,000 kilometers and the clearance is like this now. The problem is, of course, this runs LPG gas and I gotta do some other checks. Uh, if that injector here may be faulty or not. Okay. <laughs>